Both of these are QD OLED displays, with their screens switched off under the same ambient lighting conditions. If you have ever shunned or criticized QD OLED for exhibiting raised blacks or magenta tinting in bright environments, what you are seeing here is arguably the most meaningful upgrade the display technology has received since its debut in 2022. On your right is the first ever QD OLED monitor released by Alienware nearly 4 years ago. On your left is a new MSI model featuring Samsung Display's latest 5th generation QD OLED panel. As you can hopefully see, blacks on the new MSI monitor appeared deeper and more neutral compared to the first generation Alienware. This advantage held true even under direct lighting, where the latest QD OLED panel showed noticeably less grayness and magenta tinting than the older model. And in case you are wondering whether this is just a first gen versus current gen contrast, Here's a side-by-side -side comparison with a 2025 MSI QD OLED monitor I reviewed recently, again highlighting a clear improvement in ambient contrast. But that's not all, because another major upgrade on the new 5th gen QD OLED panel lies in its subpixel configuration. Until now, all QD OLED panels, whether used in TVs or monitors, have employed a triangular subpixel layout which can introduce color fringing on fine text and high contrast edges. In the most radical redesign since QD OLED's debut in 2022, the new MSI MPG34CQRX36 features an RGB stripe subpixel structure, aimed at improving text clarity and reducing fringing. Because this panel is so new, it is still unclear why the red, green and blue subpixels differ in size but the pixel fill ratio appeared to be higher than previous generations of QD OLED panels. Now, sensitivity to text fringing does vary from person to person, and I will be the first to admit I'm generally not affected by it. That said, hopefully you can see in these close-up clips shot at 100% scaling, aligned carefully for a fair comparison without introducing moiré, that fine text interface elements and edge details looked somewhat cleaner and sharper on the MSI 341CQRX36, courtesy of the RGB striped QD OLED panel. The new panel also addresses another common complaint about earlier QD OLED displays. The front surface could scratch too easily. There have even been reports of micro scratches appearing straight out of the box, allegedly caused by rubbing against the protective styrofoam packaging. In response to this feedback, QD OLED panel maker Samsung Display has improved surface durability by increasing the OLED panel hardness from 2H to 3H, offering better scratch resistance to daily wear and minor abrasions. Of course, I'm not about to take a sandpaper to the screen to test the claim, but we will likely get a clearer picture, pun not intended once more field reports emerge from owners using monitors equipped with this 5th generation QD OLED panel. Now, let's talk briefly about the panel itself. If you recall, the very first QD OLED monitor launched back in 2022 was a 34-inch ultra-wide with a 3440x1440 resolution and 1800R curvature. Samsung Display is sticking with that familiar screen size, resolution and form factor as the launch platform for its latest 5th generation QD OLED panel, but now with the vertical RGB stripe subpixel layout, improved panel hardness, stronger ambient contrast, a significant brightness boost to 1300 nits, and a faster 360Hz refresh rate, all of which are present on the MSI MPG341CQRX36. With the display HDR setting left at its default value of True Black 500, HDR peak brightness on our review unit measured just under 540 nits on a 10% window and 340 nits full fill, comfortably meeting Visa's display HDR True Black 500 certification requirements. For the first time on a QD OLED monitor, there is also a peak 1300 nits mode, and indeed, HDR peak brightness on our MSI MPG341CQRX36 sample measured above 1300 nits on a 3% window, representing the highest luminance figure we have recorded at D65 white point from any QD OLED monitor to date. 
However, we did encounter a couple of issues with the PIC 1300 nits mode. First, while PQUTF tracking was impressively accurate for 1000 nit mastered content, the monitor appeared over-brightened when handling HDR10 signals with ST2086 metadata outside of 1000 nits, which includes many HDR games on both PC and console that do not transmit ST2086 metadata, leading to luminance that's brighter than reference. On our unit, we found that lowering the HDR brightness setting to 69, a number I have fond memories of, corrected PQ tracking on a 3% window. However, this also reduced light output across the board, defeating the purpose of this high brightness mode. Furthermore, the HDR brightness setting is a global control, so if you change it for peak brightness 1300 nits mode, you will need to manually revert it to 100 when switching back to the true black 500 mode, which isn't the most convenient workflow for owners toggling between modes. Second, as shown by this grayscale ramp pattern from the Display HDR app, enabling the PIC 1300 nits mode increased the amount of posterization, particularly near black, undermining one of QD OLED's greatest strengths, namely its superb native 10 bit gradation. Unfortunately, the EOTF boost mode on the MSI MPG 341CQRX36 did not fare much better. It continued the overbrightened trend seen in the peak 1300 nits mode, and in fact exaggerated it further. Compounding the issue, HDR brightness is grayed out and unadjustable when EOTF boost is selected, though under the hood, the setting inherits whichever value was last configured in true black 500 or peak 1300 nits mode. New for 2026, MSI has introduced a user adjustable HDR ABL curve in both the true black 500 and peak 1300 nits modes, allowing users to minimize abrupt brightness fluctuations and ensure smoother transitions between light and dark scenes in HDR content. In practice, however, the customization feature proved somewhat challenging to use. While there are 14 points of adjustment available, the interface provides no indication of the window size corresponding to each point, requiring considerable trial and error to determine which adjustment affects which APL range. Moreover, there is no numerical neat readout or grid overlay to guide adjustments, meaning that unless you are measuring with a calibrated meter, the process becomes largely guesswork. The concept is promising, but the execution could benefit from refinement through future firmware updates. In terms of WCG, DCI-P3 color gamut coverage reached 99.6% in UV terms, whereas REC 2020 coverage was 82%, with the spectral power distribution showing beautifully distinct red, green, and blue peaks indicative of an updated QD OLED panel. Most of the SDR picture presets on this monitor are mapped to the QD OLED panel's naturally white color gamut, with no available options to manually adjust or constrain the color space. The only exception is the sRGB preset, which accurately tracks the sRGB slash Rec. 709 gamut, making it the most suitable choice for watching SDR content. The default brightness setting of 70 in sRGB mode measured close to 270 nits, which is too bright in a light control room. We lowered the value to 25 to obtain a peak white of 120 nits on our review unit. Our MSI MPG 341CQRX36 sample was extremely well calibrated in sRGB mode from Factory, delivering an average data error of below 1 across 140 patches measured using the challenging color checker SG chart, and no inaccuracy exceeding the humanly perceptible threshold of delta error 3, contributing to highly cinematic and natural looking colors in real world SDR content, especially if you adjust the gamma setting from the default 2.2 to 2.4 to impart greater image depth for watching in a dimly lit room. The MSI 341CQRX36 manifested excellent bright uniformity typical of QD OLED, with no dirty screen effect, bending or color tinting even off axis. Dark uniformity on our review sample was also one of the cleanest we've seen to date, 
making us glad that moving to a new subpixel structure hasn't materially worsened screen homogeneity. Using a Leobotna tester, input lag measured 15.2 milliseconds at 60 frames per second, 7.3 milliseconds at 120 fps, and 3.1 milliseconds at 240 fps, which is marginally higher than expected, though displaying a 69 video signal from the source device on an ultra wide screen may have played a part. For a more representative measurement up to the monitor's maximum refresh rate of 360 Hz, we used an NVIDIA LDAT device which takes into account the mouse click, CPU processing, operating system, game application, GPU rendering, and finally the display. At 360 FPS, end to end system latency measured 9.5 milliseconds across 100 runs, paving the way for super responsive gameplay. In addition to reducing input lag, the combination of 360fps video signal paired with 360Hz screen refresh rate also resulted in very high motion clarity free of black smearing artifacts, thanks to OLED's near instantaneous pixel response times. The MSI MPG341 CQR X36 offers a black frame insertion or BFI function via the MPRT setting, provided the source frame rate is sufficiently high. MPRT couldn't be activated at 120Hz, and on our PC setup, the next step up was 240Hz with no custom refresh rate possible. It's worth remembering that enabling MPRT at 240fps will essentially halve the light output, yet never surpass the motion clarity of a true 360Hz refresh rate without BFI. Beyond high refresh rate, the MSI MPG341 CQR X36 handle 24fps movies and 50fps content we get in PAL regions smoothly without judder or frame skipping. In terms of connectivity, the MSI 341 CQR X36 provides two HDMI 2.1 ports with 48 gigabits per second of HDMI 2.1 and DSC bandwidth, as well as one DisplayPort 2.1A with UHBR 13.5 or 54 gigabits per second bandwidth which would necessitate the use of DSC if you wish to play games at 3440 1440 at 360Hz in 10-bit HDR though not in 8-bit SDR. Other sockets on the monitor include a USB Type-C port with 98W power delivery, a headphone jack, and some USB ports. If you wish to play console games at 4K 120Hz in HDR from the Sony PS5 or the Xbox Series X, you will need to change the HDMI 2.1 setting on the monitor from the default PC mode to console mode. Although naturally, black bars will appear on either side owing to the ultra-wide form factor of the MSI 341 CQR X36. Do note that the HDMI 2.1 setting applies globally rather than per input, so if you switch to console mode for HDMI, you will need to manually revert to PC mode when using DisplayPort for various reasons. Given the issues with the PIC 1300 nits and EOTF boost modes, our preference was to leave Display HDR at its default setting of True Black 500, then set the max TML and max FFTML values in the HDR calibration app on the Xbox Series X accordingly, allowing HGIG compliant titles to be rendered in a manner that is not subject to double tone mapping. VR worked well to minimize tearing and frame drops for fluid gameplay though VRR flicker was still visible in a few VRR games, particularly on static menus. In keeping with what's expected from a monitor-class device, 444 Chroma was fully reproduced at the maximum panel resolution and refresh rate even in HDR. To mitigate OLED burn-in, the MSI MPG341 CQR X36 features OLED Care 3.0, which includes an AI care sensor that leverages AI to detect and precisely track human presence in real time, allowing the monitor to power down and wake up automatically. One drawback is that the screen powers off completely when no user is detected, requiring a few seconds to boot back up, complete with a splash logo. Hopefully MSI can refine this in a future firmware update to utilize a black screen standby instead, minimizing wake time. Besides AI care sensor, the MSI MPG341 CQR X36 also offers a remarkably comprehensive suite of anti-screen burn measures for you to tweak to your liking. And although the pixel shifting cannot be fully disabled, 
there is some over-provisioning of pixels beyond the 3440 x 1440 UWQHD resolution, such that pixel shifting will never cause edges of the picture to be cropped off however slightly. On top of that, MSI backs the 341CQR-X36 with a 3-year warranty that includes coverage for OLED burn-in, bringing it in line with the industry standard for premium QD OLED gaming monitors. Design-wise, the 1800R curvature strikes a well-judged balance between subtlety and immersion for a 34-inch ultra-wide format, which some users prefer for its extended horizontal field of view especially beneficial in competitive gaming where peripheral vision can offer a tactical edge. The display ships with a pedestal stand featuring a sturdy metal base with a compact footprint, allowing for efficient use of desk space without compromising stability. Let's sum up. The MSI MPG 341CQR QD OLED X36 represents a major upgrade over all previous 34-inch ultra-wide QD OLED monitors so far delivering visibly deeper and more neutral-looking blacks in the presence of ambient light, a revamped RGB stripe subpixel layout to reduce color fringing and enhance text clarity, a brighter luminous output of up to 1300 nits on small window sizes and 300 nits full screen, as well as a higher refresh rate of 360Hz for even lower latency and greater motion clarity from a 360fps video source. Combine this with all the key advantages of QD OLED technology, such as pixel-level light control without haloing artifacts, vibrant colors, wide viewing angles, class-leading screen uniformity and near-instantaneous pixel response times, the MSI MPG341CQR QD OLED X36 monitor is a winner of our highly recommended award. Of course, no display is perfect. On our early review sample, both the Peak 1300 nits and EOTF boost modes tracked noticeably brighter than reference when rendering HDR games from PCs and consoles, while the HDR ABL curve customization feature, though promising in concept, remain rough around the edges. Hopefully MSI can refine these elements through future firmware updates. We would also have liked to see the provision of DisplayPort 2.1a USB R20 with full 80 gigabits per second bandwidth to avoid the use of DSC when playing games at maximum screen resolution and refresh rate. Now, as premium as the MPG 341CQR-X36 is, retailing at around US$1100, MSI is going to unveil an even higher tier QD OLED monitor. To find out what upgrades it brings to the table, Please check out our coverage video by clicking here.